Benjamin Franklin once said something along the lines of, The only certain things in life are death and taxes. Incidentally, one of the ways to avoid paying taxes is to simply die. That being said, no amount of tax terms or anything else in the world will stop you from eventually meeting your end. This inevitability of death is what makes it so scary to us. In order to deal with this, people often try to figure out death from an ethical, rational, or philosophical perspective. When doing so, they tend to operate under the basic assumption that it is good to be alive. This does not necessarily mean that everyone is happy being alive, but those who try to end their lives intentionally usually do so to avoid pain, rather than for the sake of ending their life, for the sake of not living. Life is good because without life there is no I, and without I there is no is. We must exist in order to perceive good or bad. But does this mean that it is bad to die? The obvious answer is that of course death is bad if it means the end of life. We do not, for the purpose of this discussion, consider any form of religious afterlife. We like life, so we do not want it to end. But there are no easy answers in ethics, and if you think about it a little deeper, the question, is death bad, is surprisingly difficult to answer. If you ask most people, it's not the being dead part that they're afraid of, technically speaking, but rather the it's not being alive part that concerns them. As conscious beings, it is terrifying to imagine not having the capacity to be our of ourselves, to imagine the end of well ourselves. If you think that, the Roman philosopher Lucretius would disagree with you. Think about it. You didn't exist before you were born, either. In fact, you've spent the vast majority of time up to this point not existing. So why do you care so much about not existing after death? It wasn't that bad the first time, was it? Thomas Nagel, a contemporary philosopher, tackles this question. He tries to figure out the deeper mechanics of what's behind what we think is good or bad. Nagel points out that when we die, we cannot be harmed by our non-existence, since we wouldn't be aware of it. It's like stomping on somebody's skeleton. Why would they care? To answer this, Nagel gives the example of a person with suffered brain damage and ended up with the intelligence of a baby. Now, that person cannot be absorbed by this fact since they cannot comprehend it. In fact, they are probably happier than when they were before. Babies don't have a lot of complicated needs. But most people would consider that a tragedy, wouldn't they? Nagel concludes that it's the loss of a potential good thing that is bad, and such is the case with death. Death is bad because it takes away a good thing that you could have had for a longer time, in this case, life. Shirley Kagan, another modern philosopher, doesn't quite agree with this answer to Lucretius. According to Kagan, it's a bit of a cop-out answer. If death is so bad because it takes away something from us, is non-existence before death really any better? It takes away something that we could have had, or that we will have. Why do we care so much about losing something, but not about not gaining the same thing when we could have? If you ask most people if they are upset that they weren't born earlier, they would say no, why would I care? But if we ask people if they would want to die later, they'd say yes. Why? According to Fred Fieldman, another modern philosopher, this is a question of how your brain processes time. When you think of yourself being born earlier, you mentally push your life back without extending your lifespan. When you think of dying later, you do not imagine being born later. Instead, you imagine a longer lifespan. But if you had a meteorite, says Kagan, that would kill everyone in two weeks, almost everybody's answer to that first question would change. The meteorite example forces you to not assume that you would die proportionally to your earlier birth date. So that being born earlier does elongate your lifespan. Once you take that into account, not being born earlier might be just as bad as not dying later. Ultimately, Kagan doesn't end up completely satisfied with this answer, and in fact, in his essay, he does not find an answer that he deems satisfactory, although he does end up with some good points in response to Lucretius. One of the more obvious answers, in my opinion, is that the loss of something we have experienced is much worse than simply not having it, because that loss means more. If you have a really nice hat, for example, and you lose it, you're going to feel worse than if I told you, yeah, you could have had that hat, but I bought the last one out, so, sorry. You could go into a lot of ethical or metaphysical discussion about whether this distinction is truly rational, or if it makes sense on some very logical level. But does it matter? At the end of the day, everybody dies. I understand that just because something is inevitable doesn't mean it's not bad. 
but death is, at the risk of sounding cliché, a part of life. I don't think it matters all that much if the reasoning for being afraid or not afraid of death is rational. In the end, we all meet our end. It's impossible for us to truly understand what death is, even from a philosophical standpoint, but that's okay. As long as whatever explanation we choose brings us some comfort in the face of the inevitable, that's okay.